Astro 30 here yet again with a brand new video for you. Today we're looking at this Cambridge Audio Azure, I think that's how you pronounce it, 540A integrated stereo amplifier. Now it does have a lid for it, it's just in the other room. This belongs to a housemate and uh, having a look around here immediately I can see that that 220 ohm, I think that's a 2 watt resistor is starting to get a bit crispy that's been getting hot. The actual main mains fuse is missing for whatever reason but I've measured this giant 300 VA transformer uh, it's about 86 ohms on the primary so it's not a reason for the uh, fuse to go away no idea why it blew if it blew it just got removed for whatever reason. The other thing is you can see around those filter caps that nasty corrosive conductive circuit glue it's gone brown and there's some around these capacitors too not that you can really see it but it's become brittle and crusty and it's coming off because if we take a multimeter and shove it up my ass, no, we measure across that glue we've got about seven mega ohm there that's that's pretty bad so those capacitors will have to all come out and that glue has to be removed. I'm not sure what year this is, but first thing I'm going to have to do is go out and get another 6.2 amp fuse, slow blow for the primary um, of the transformer, or it's not going to work at all. Apparently the other complaint was it would turn on and then immediately turn off. So I don't know what that means, but yeah, it's something we'll have to look at once I put a fuse in it. Okay, so I've been to JCAR and I've got some uh, 6.3 amp slow blow ceramic fuses. They're $1.85 each, so they're quite expensive. And two 220 ohm ceramic 5 watt resistors, which I may or may not use yet. But one thing I wanted to point out, which I found quite interesting, with the back panel, they've actually got the inputs and outputs then the left and right channels marked both the right way up as you're looking at it from this angle and also upside down if you're actually bending over looking from the top down that's a nice touch now I don't really want to power this up with the power amp um, filter capacitors in the condition they are because I don't want to take out a circuit breaker in the house because it's a pain in the ass to go downstairs to have it reset Ask me how I know. Um, so before I do that, I might actually pull the power amp module out. They haven't made this disconnectable, which is annoying. Um, the inputs, yes, are disconnectable, but the actual power wires are not. Because the main power feed comes into here and they're actually soldered to the board, which is, ugh frustrating and no it does not disconnect at the other end and I managed to find a schematic for this online or service manual which I found quite interesting uh, and its date is between 2002 and 2015 the schematics are kind of hard to follow um, this amplifier is made in the Netherlands by the way and um, this power transformer has powered up the whole entire time this unit is plugged in and turned on at this switch at the back. The only thing they're switching is the high current winding of the toroidal into the power amps. The actual low side winding is connected to the main PCB which powers the PIC microcontroller and the regulators for the preamp um, section. And they're using like 16, 18 op amps in this design. Each input has its own voltage follower buffer and I'm assuming they did that for impedance reasons so you could connect rather high impedance 
um, inputs to it because the first um, stage in the audio chain is the tone control network. Alright, so now I'm going to have fun pulling this out and taking the capacitors off the board and removing all that nasty circuit glue. Well, that was a thorough nightmare to get out. There's a million screws you've got to remove. And the back panel has to be, well, semi-removed so you can get the uh, speaker terminal connectors out because they're hardwired to the board as well. Anyway, looking at the other side of this board, there's a few suspect joints maybe, but I'm kind of concerned as to what the hell that is. It's a green crusty blob. There's no component there. That's not a pad. As far as I know, it's not a pad. Well, it might be an end of a resistor, but yeah, that, if that that's a solder joint. That is kind of weird. There's also another one just over here past this orange wire. Right here that's gone all weird. Um, yeah, so it might be, unless that's a circuit glue has worked its way through the PCB, which is entirely possible. There's another one here too. Right, so I'm going to have to remove the filter capacitors one by one. They're all the same. Um, this was designed uh, to have two separate power transformer windings going in to um, power it. But in this version of the 540A, they just bridge the two sections together so you end up with 2200 microfarad capacitors in, in, in parallel. This is kind of why I hate circuit glue. Because um, it's nasty stuff. They really need to stop using it. And if this was built in 2002, it's only taken you know, 11 years for it to corrode. The capacitors are out. They're not too bad underneath. They haven't quite made it. Well, that one has. Onto one of the pins anyway. Um, so yeah, I need to clean it off. It's a thorough bitch because all these wires underneath had to unsolder one. There was cable ties tying wires together as well, so it made it difficult. Um, it's probably a good idea I decided to tack this board first because there is quite a fair few bad joints under here. Um, especially here. And I saw some others. Uh, that one doesn't even look like it's soldered at all. So yeah, I'm going to have to go through and touch up some of these joints before I put the thing back together. Okay, so I've cleaned up all the circuit glue as best as I could off the circuit boards and the capacitors by picking it off of my fingernail and using circuit board cleaner on the circuit board. Now I'm just measuring the capacitors to make sure, well, they're not shorted and they're still functioning. Um, I'm on the millifarad range, so I'm getting 2.16 millifarad, which is 2,160 uh, microfarad. So I've tested three so far, and it's come back uh, same results. So all I've got to do is just uh, wait for the capacitors to charge. There we go, 2.17. That one is good. I don't actually have an ESR meter, so that would be handier. But um, doesn't matter. This gives me enough indication of, you know, how good these capacitors are. 2.17. Uh, practically, if I really wanted to spend money on this, I'd replace all the capacitors. Just for, you know, peace of mind. Okay, 2.16. Um, takes a while for it to range. 
There we go, 2.18. That one's good as well. And lucky last, but not least, Come on. There we go, 2.16. Alright, those capacitors should be okay. And as I said, I've got the circuit board as clean as best as I can. It's not as bad looking as it is, or was I should say. But the circuit glue has done its work. You know, that resistor, that link wire. Um, yeah, I've still got some circuit glue crap left under there, those diodes. I'll have to, um, Give it another quick clean with a Q-tip. All right, well it's all back together. I replaced one resistor and a link wire because they were corroded. Unfortunately, a pad lifted on the other side. Of course it did. That's how far corroded it is. So, well, I'm ready to pop the fuse in. So I'll do that now. Fuse is in. And I should probably measure across the line cord here to make sure that A, we've got continuity, and B, no short circuits. Because I really do not want to blow a breaker. Okay, it's currently turned off. Turn it on. That's 74 ohm. I reckon that's fine. Alright, moment of truth. Have I succeeded? Or have I failed? And the fuse just blew straight away. Okay, well, that's not good. Okay, I've popped a new fuse in and I've disconnected the main PCB from the transformer board because I've noticed there's more circuit glue around the bridge rectifier of that as well and it might have a shorted regulator so if the fuse goes away this time we've got a problem and it went straight away it cannot handle the, the inrush current right so that's a shame so that must be over a 300 VA transformer so it's going to need a soft start circuit or a limiting circuit installed in this to make this work properly. I don't know the history of this amplifier, where it came from, but anyway, I'll get back to that a little bit later. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video here right now. If you enjoyed it, please remember to rate, comment and subscribe down below, and you can always follow me on Facebook and become a Patreon member for as little as a dollar a month. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, have a great day.